All right, so I guess I didn't get completely bored of doing these videos after the first one, so now we're on to the second problem. And here's what we're looking at. So I'm going to prove this first statement here, and I'm going to like write it out and everything. And then for the other thing, if you were to actually write this out, it'd be a little tedious. And once you see the picture, it should be clear how to actually proceed with the proof. And so I'm just going to draw a little bit and leave it at that. Okay, so let's prove the first statement. So for the forward direction, suppose E is new null. All right, so now let x equal p union n. Um, this notation just means disjoint union. Um, I've seen it like this. I've seen it like this. I've heard of people doing it like this. Whatever works, I'm going to do it like this. So anyways, let this be a Han decomposition. of x with respect to nu. And so basically what that means is that nu is positive on this set, nu is negative on this set, and of course uh, p union p and n are disjoint and their union is all of x. And x is the space where e lives. Anyways, um, so let's see here. Since e is nu null, what exactly does that mean? Um, it means for all f subsets of E such that f is, and then I'm just going to write this for measurable. Um, but yeah, for all measurable subsets f of E, nu of f is equal to zero. So in particular, nu of E intersect P equals zero and nu of E intersect N equals zero because these are just subsets of E. Thus, nu of E is equal to, this is nu plus of E plus nu minus of E, if we break up the measure into the positive and negative parts, and this is by definition nu of E intersect P minus nu of E intersect N, and I'm pretty sure zero minus zero is zero. Um, so anyways, conversely, so basically we just showed that um, what we wanted, nu of E is equal to zero. So now conversely, suppose we know that nu of E is equal to zero. Um, so this means that nu plus of e plus nu minus of e is equal to zero. And let's see here, these are both positive measures and so they're, they can take values only greater than or equal to zero and so if the sum of these two things is zero then that means that nu plus of e is equal to nu minus of e is equal to zero. So now let f be a measurable subset of e. Then let's see here, nu plus of f is less than or equal to nu plus of e, which is equal to zero, and that's because nu plus is a positive measure and f is just a subset of e. And Likewise, nu minus f is less than or equal to nu minus e, which is equal to zero. So what this means is that nu plus of f equals nu minus of f equals zero, since, um, of course, nu plus and nu minus are positive measures, and if they're less than or equal to zero, and greater than or equal to zero, then there's zero. Okay, so, anyways, thus, nu of f is equal to 
mu plus of f minus mu minus of f, which is just 0 minus 0 again, which is 0. Now, this holds for all subsets f of v which are measurable. Hence, E is new null, and that's what we wanted to show. All right, so now the next part we want here, let's write this down. We want new and mu are, ab, um, are mutually singular, if and only if, new and mu are, if and only if, new plus and mu r, and new minus and mu r. So basically three of these can be proven using basically the same picture. So um, basically let's take our space, this is going to be x, and let's break it up into different regions. So we're going to make it so that mu lives here, nu plus lives here, and nu minus lives here. This is basically what um, both of these statements mean. It means that we can break up... This statement certainly means that we can draw this picture and we can break up... Um, like if this were to be where nu lives, then we can break it up into where nu plus lives and where nu minus lives. Um, and of course, since uh, nu is mutually singular with respect to mu, that means that they live on disjoint sets, and so you see that here. Um, and so basically what happens is when we look at this now, um, when we start comparing the norm of nu with respect to mu, they're still going to live on the same sets, just that um, the only difference is that the things in this region are going to flip sign. Um, but that has no effect on the mutual singularity, and so this di this picture will still hold. And so that's basically how that would work. Now, um, if we had this holding, then you can see that this holds because you just look, okay, so um, nu plus lives here and mu lives here, so certainly these two are mutually singular, and nu minus and mu live on different sets, so these two are mutually singular. Now, the only tricky part is if we suppose this and this hold. So, what would this look like? We, we could have two different pictures here. So, the first picture we'd have is we w we'd be able to write like, if this is our space x, then we can break it up into e plus and f plus. And in this, re in this region, nu is identically zero and mu is identically zero. So remember on the previous pictures, I was writing where these sets lived. So like if I were using my notation from there, I would write nu plus in this region and mu in this region to indicate that nu plus lives here and mu lives here. In this case, I want to actually not look at where they live, but look at where they're zero. Um, so anyways, we can break it up like this, and then we can break it up in a different way and show where, if, if this is also another diagram of x, so these two guys are like the same thing, um, then we could have nu minus is equal to zero here, and mu is equal to zero here, and this set we'll call it e minus, and this we'll call f minus. So then, what would this look like if we combine the two pictures? Um, what we would have is we'd have this. And here, what we have is we have, um, let's see here, so this is E plus intersected with E minus. This is E plus intersected with F minus. This is F plus intersected with E minus. And this is F plus intersected with F minus. So mu is zero here, it's zero here, and it's zero here. And then uh, nu plus is zero here, but I don't really care about that. Same with nu minus here, but here we have both nu plus is zero 
and new minus is zero. So what that means is that this is actually going to be where new lives and these three regions are going to be where mu lives. So we see we're actually breaking this up like in, in the other cases um, we had a very uh, a sort of a different looking picture because we were looking at where the sets lived. Here we're looking at where the sets vanish or where the measures vanish and so this shows us that we get disjoint sets and so we get mutual singularity. And so that's basically from a visual perspective how you would see that this holds if and only if this holds if and only if these two statements hold. And if you want to write out the details you would just write out a whole bunch of like Han decompositions and like um, break up these sets into um, the disjoint places where each one lives and you'd like write out the details of these E's and F's and E's minuses, F minuses and stuff but basically it should all be straightforward once you understand this picture. And with that we are done with the second exercise.